This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I'm so glad that you have decided to join me today for Good News Today. This is a school of Jesus, a discipleship to Jesus, a school of the supernatural, and a place where you can receive the wisdom and the knowledge of God so that you can grow in the leadership principles of Jesus and become a better person by the goodness and the kindness of God so that you can be a blessing to God and be a blessing to people. Now, listen to me carefully. In the last uh, teaching, I was talking about the leadership principles of Jesus, and today I'm going to sort of continue that, but I'm really going to go into something I'd introduced earlier, which has to do with the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset. And I was saying in the very last teaching uh, that, the, uh, that the best way, if you're a junior leader following a senior leader, that you need to um, learn how your senior, senior leader thinks. This is true in any church, any business, any organization, any corporation. You need to read the same books that they're reading. You need to get on the same page if you're going to grow with your leader. Now, the 12 apostles were selected by Jesus and Jesus chose them to be the leaders of the church. And so these 12 apostles, they listened to Jesus, they talked with Jesus, they learned how to think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus. And if I can say this, though I've said it before, it bears repeating. In the book of Matthew, who was one of the apostles of Jesus, he wrote about Jesus, and he talked about how Jesus got resurrected, and he said to his apostles, he said to his disciples, Matthew 28, he said, go and teach the nations everything that I have commanded you. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptize them and teach them everything that I've taught you. Jesus said, go and teach the nations. Now the New Testament or the New Covenant was written in Greek. And the word teach there means to disciple. It is the word mathteuhu. And here's the concept behind the word. It means to walk with the teacher until you learn how to think like the teacher, talk like the teacher, act like the teacher. So you think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, till you have a Jesus life and a Jesus ministry. Also, Peter, one of the apostles of Jesus in his book, um, his first book, uh, chapter two, verse 21, he said, Jesus has left you an example. Christ has left you an example that you should follow in his steps. Now in the original language, the Greek word for example is hupogramos. And here's the picture. You have a teacher and you have disciples. The teacher is writing the words of the Hebrew alphabet. He's writing the word of the Lord on the board. And each disciple is trying to write each letter of the Hebrew alphabet exactly like his teacher. Well, Jesus is your teacher and you're his disciple. And Jesus obeyed the word of God Almighty completely. And so if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you want to act just like Jesus did. You want to write the word of God through your faith, patience, obedience in every area of your life, just like Jesus. Christ is your example. You want to follow in his steps. And so if you follow Jesus in life, you'll follow Jesus in ministry and you'll see the supernatural presence of God in your life and you'll see the supernatural presence of God in your ministry. So what we're talking about here is that uh, Jesus identified these leaders, he built these leaders, he developed these leaders, and the way they became leaders was they followed Jesus. And Jesus, was, Jesus told his leaders, he said, you are to identify leaders, potential leaders, and you're to develop those leaders, and you're to supervise those leaders. So the apostle Paul, who was a spiritual father to his son Timothy, this is what he said, the things that you have learned, commit to faithful men who will also teach others. The Apostle Paul said this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. In other words, he said this, the things which you have heard from me, he's talking to Timothy, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So the Apostle Paul spoke in the fourth chapter uh, of the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, cha verse 2, and this is what he said. Remember, he said, faithful men. It's required among stewards, those that are going to be servants, those that are going to be responsible before God, that a man be found faithful. The Greek word found means it was an exhaustive search. It means, faithful means committed, 
devoted, dedicated. This kind of a man was dedicated to God. And the word found means that God had to search because he was hard to find. A faithful man, a devoted man, a committed man, a loyal man was so hard for God to find, he had to search. He had to search for one that was reliable, dependable, trustworthy, and faithful. And so you have to do more than find a good leader. You have to find a faithful follower of Jesus. You have to build them. You have to develop them. You have to develop their relationship with God Almighty. You have to be a father to them, a mother to them. You have to mentor them. You have to love them. You have to discipline them. You have to grow them up in the virtues of Jesus Christ. And there are three things that you need to do that I want to talk about right now to develop a leader. Number one, you have to give them permission to fail. This is all part of the growth mindset. Okay, it's all about the learning curve. It's all about not yet. We talked about that in the previous teaching. Now listen to me carefully. When you're developing leaders, let's say you're able to do something at a nine. You're going to have a leadership dip. In other words, they may only be able to do it as a three and a four. But if you give them permission to fail and they gain wisdom by their mistakes and you teach them and you train them, sooner or later, they're going to do it at a five, a seven, eight, a ten. They may even, even, even end up doing it better than you. And that's really what you want to have happen. So in order to develop a leader, you have to get him or her out of that comfort zone and tap that unrealized potential that they may not even know that they have. And then you need to applaud their successes. You need to encourage them. I'm going to say this again, because the road to success always includes failure and failure is always on the road to success. Listen to me carefully. People grow best, not sitting on the bench or the sidelines. People grow best when they're actually in the game. Their participation is what helps them grow. Their direct knowledge and experience is what causes them to scale up and expand. Not just by being a spectator. That may be where it starts, but you have to move them from being a spectator to being a participant. You must stretch people where they are. Listen to me carefully. Creating leaders is not part of a program. It must be burned into the culture of your ministry, your church, your corporation, your business, uh, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. And the way a person becomes a good leader is to become a disciple of the leadership principles of Jesus. Now, let me say this to you, because the leadership principles of Jesus let me tell you about Jesus' mindset. This is very important. Jesus did not see people as a means of getting things done. In the leadership principle of Jesus, Jesus saw getting things done as a means for developing people. Listen, this works in a business, in a corporation. This works in a church, in a ministry. Jesus did not see people as a means of getting things done. Okay, that's not good leadership. Good leadership, great leadership is to follow the principles of Jesus. Jesus saw getting things done as a means of developing people. As a leader, you must not see people as a means of getting things done. You're using them. You must see things getting done as a means to developing people. Okay, so I want to say this to you because when you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus went through a four-step process with those he was developing to be leaders. And this is what Jesus would do. He would say, I'm going to do this, you watch. You watch how I think, you watch what I say, you watch what I do. You watch. I'm going to do it, you watch. Number two, then Jesus would say, I'm going to do this, but now I want you to help. Okay? All right? Number three, Jesus would say, now you're going to do this, and I'm going to help you to do it. And number four, then Jesus would say, I've taught you. Now you just go, and you do it. Okay? And so we need to follow those principles of Jesus because it's very, very important. So now when we're talking about leadership, what blocks and stops leadership, what blocks and stops a person is a fixed mindset. 
What causes a person to move forward and be successful is a growth mindset. And so in the scriptures, there's two kinds of mindsets that people have. There's the carnal mindset, which is fixed, which we will call the fixed mindset. And then there's the spiritual mind that's pro-growth. We will call this the growth mindset. Now there's a very strange scripture in the book of, of Galatians, chapter three, verse three, where Paul speaks. And he says, having begun in the Holy Spirit, he's speaking to believers in Jesus. He said, are you now made perfect by the flesh? You started out spiritual, now are you gonna be carnal? Okay, this phrase, made perfect in the Greek, is epileo, epileo, epileo. And it means to bring to an end, to accomplish, to mature, to execute, or to complete. So when you're born again, that means when you turn from sin and against sin and you believe in Jesus and you give your heart to Jesus and you begin to learn the life of Jesus, you begin to follow Jesus, you begin to love Jesus, obey Jesus, you read from Matthew to the book of Revelation a number of times and then you start from Genesis and read to Revelation. You don't understand everything you read, but you believe the teaching of Jesus and you obey Jesus and, and, and you uh, deny yourself, take up your cross and you follow Jesus. When you're born again, your human spirit's born again by the word of God and the Holy Spirit, you have eternal life, you will go to the lake of fire, and you become a disciple of Christ, okay? That's when you begin your life in the Holy Spirit, because Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter three, you're born again in the Holy Spirit. When you're born again, it starts your growth mindset, okay? And you have growth mindset potential, okay? But to turn this potential into a reality, you must execute the flesh in order to complete or continue your growth in Jesus. What do I mean by execute the flesh? I don't mean to kill yourself. I mean that you stop sinning. That means you stop cursing. The scripture says you will not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The scripture says um, corrupt lips, sinful lips, perverse talk, put it away from you. The scripture says let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth only that which is good that edifies and builds up others. Let your, be, your, let your speech always be seasoned with salt. So um, the flesh talk or carnal talk is sinful talk. It uses vulgarity, it uses foul language. Jesus said, put that away, okay? The word of God says, you shall not steal. In other words, the teaching of the apostle Paul and Jesus says, let him who used to steal, steal no more. So when you when you use clean talk, that's growth mindset, that's the Holy Spirit. When, you, when you're stealing, that's the carnality, that's flesh, that needs to be executed, you need to stop stealing, you steal no more, that's growth mindset, um, the mind of Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, have the mind of Christ, do not steal, right? Let a man work with his own hands so he can do good, right? So the scripture says, you shall not commit adultery. So Flesh life, carnal life, sinful life is to commit adultery. Sleep with somebody who's not your spouse. If you do not commit adultery, okay, and you do not fornicate, okay, then that's growth in the Holy Spirit, okay? So, um, uh, so you honor your father and mother, that's growth in the Holy Spirit. You don't commit murder, that's growth in the Holy Spirit. Um, you do not covet something that belongs to your neighbor, that's growth in the Holy Spirit. To covet, to lie, to steal, to cheat, to uh, defraud people, to commit murder, to uh, take what belongs to someone else. This is all called the flesh. It's called the flesh is a way of life. So you're supposed to execute sin and live righteous and live holy. That's what we're talking about as a growth mindset, okay? So um, what it is, is you must bring it in to the dominance, the control, and the appetites of your flesh. You gotta say no to your flesh, okay? Executing your flesh makes your life mature in Jesus. When I say executing your flesh, again I mean stop sinning and obey the word of God, okay? In 1 Corinthians 2, 14 it says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for to him they are foolishness, and he's not able to know them because they're spiritually discerned. In other words, without Jesus Christ in your life, the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to discern the things that God really wants to say and really wants to do for you. It's called natural thinking, and you wanna have, uh, and that's a fixed mindset. It limits you. 
a, a, a spiritual mindset takes the limits off where you can discern what God is saying and what he wants to do for you through his son, Jesus. Okay? Now, when you first start out, you're closer to a fixed mindset. mindset. You're carnal. I'm talking about when you first start out with your life in Jesus. Okay? Um, but the hardest part of a growth mindset is to imagine possibilities. See, in the growth mindset, you start to imagine possibilities. The Word of God gives you promises. These promises of God, things He wants to do for you, uh, become uh, imaginations, holy imaginations, righteous imaginations, possibilities, things God wants to do for you. And in a growth mindset, you've got to have imagination, holy imagination, righteous imagination, things that take you beyond your comfort zone, okay? So um, how do you bring a shadow to substance? And this is where people really struggle, okay? So let me, let, let me help you identify the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. In the fixed mindset, things stay the same. You're stuck. Your finances, the person remains stuck. But in the growth mindset, a person's always learning, always striving, always changing, and they're always, in a sense, reinventing themselves or their business or their corporation, okay? In a fixed mindset, a person says, I've grown this much, I'm good, I don't need to grow anymore. Hmm. I'm going to stop right here, I have a choice. Do you really want to stay with that choice of being fixed, of being limited? Why? Because if you stay there, life's going to pass you by. Okay? Life's going to pass you by. So you don't want that kind of a fixed mindset. Here's the truth. God gives you a choice, but anything less than growth is not his choice. Okay? When you choose to stop growing, you are in a fixed mindset. In the growth mindset, the person recognizes that they need to grow in order to please the Father and Jesus. A growth mindset is more than being flexible, open-minded, or having a positive outlook. A growth mindset means that you're willing to yield to the Holy Spirit and be transformed in your mind by the Word of God. It means that you're willing to sacrifice your past in order to apprehend your future as you follow Jesus. Jesus is standing on and in your future, but it will take a growth mindset for you to meet Jesus in your future. Philippians 2 and 5 says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, Have the mind of Christ. Okay? But how do we have the mind of Christ? By obeying Romans chapter, two, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world. In other words, in the original language, it means do not allow this world to force you into its fashion plate, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and your mind is renewed by the Word of God, Matthew to Revelation, those books of the Bible, Genesis to the book of Revelation, study the teachings of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, teach the book of Acts, the teachings of the Apostle Paul, James, and Jude, and, uh, and uh, 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 Peter, and John, okay? Okay, so study these teachings. While it is true that everyone is actually a mixture of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, a fixed mindset limits the benefits you can receive from God and experience in this life. But when you recognize that you can develop and grow, you access your God-given neuroplasticity, which gives your brain the ability to adjust, adapt, and actually change in physical structure. You, you, I don't know if you're aware of this, but your, um, your mindset determines your neuroplasticity, okay? And so um, this, um, this growth mindset actually signals a shift into um, <laughs> a better life, okay? Now, how do I get this, this growth mindset? It all begins with the desire to develop one. You must be willing to take the challenge. At first, you think small. But the scripture says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. And the scripture says, though your beginning is small toward the end, you will greatly increase. So that means that you have to have a vision for something bigger, for something better, for something greater. 
And you need to let this vision come to you by the promises of God and by the Word of God, that the revelation of Jesus Christ. After a vision, you have to have a plan. You have to create a schedule. You have to make a time for growth. Did you see that? Create a plan, have a schedule, create time for growth. It will not happen overnight. And you have to be a management sentinel. In other words, you have to practice time management. A sentinel is a soldier or a guard whose job is to stand and keep watch. We must guard our time against the little foxes that try to drain or steal our time and hinder our forward movement. The Bible says, beware of the little foxes. Okay? When a person has a fixed mindset, they actually create limitations for themselves that will keep them from being able to overcome new challenges. When a person has a growth mindset, they're able to humble themselves and receive feedback from somebody who has the same kind of growth mindset and they learn how to overcome obstacles. It is absolutely essential that you spend time with people who are about overcoming uh, challenges and being victorious over problems, okay? And they have this expectation that they will move forward in life. A key concept in practice in, is learning how to bounce back from setbacks and practicing resilience. When a pilot is in training, that pilot practices crashing in the flight simulator in every kind of situation until they develop muscle memory, until it becomes their default mode, and which functions like an autopilot. By receiving feedback, you're practicing crashing, okay? Now, do not ask for feedback unless you're willing to receive it without getting angry at the person giving the feedback then they'll just quit giving it to you, okay? Some people who embrace a growth mindset find the strength to keep going because of their loved ones, okay? Or the ones following in their steps. A growth mindset recognizes the pressure, the present challenges are temporary, and all they have to do is keep moving to get beyond them. Do you know what keeps a great pilot great? Is he practices crashing so when it eventually happens, he knows exactly what to do to keep it from occurring. Everybody's able to live. You need to observe who you're drawn to, who you gravitate toward, who gravitates toward you. Like attracts like. Prophets attract prophets. Lawyers attract lawyers. Doctors attract doctors. You get the idea. Millionaires attract millionaires. Why? Because they think alike. Growth mindset attracts growth mindsets. Fixed minds attract fixed mindsets. One difference between men and women is that men will take more breaks, if I can say that to you, and women need to schedule more breaks to get rest in their minds, get a new view, and then they'll find a fresh perspective to solve problems. Typically after a break, fresh revelation comes that will create a breakthrough by the presence and power of God. Listen to me carefully. When something does not work right, you have a fixed mindset. You feel like you have been a failure. But when you have a growth mindset, you do not see failure. What you see is a not yet. I'm on my way in a learning curve. In the fixed mindset, a difficult challenge sees a negative stressful event that causes the cortisone level to actually go up. But in the growth mindset, the stress is seen as something positive. The cortisone level actually goes down because the person sees that situation as informative and growth potential and, and, and something that they can use to develop and become better than before. You see, a fixed mind produces a green color map. It actually is green uh, on an x-ray, on a brain scan. But a pro-growth mindset reflects a red color map on a brain scan. In other words, the red color means that the brain is firing. It's literally on fire. It's thinking. It's creative. It's innovative. It sees possibility and it gets very excited. Okay, the nerve cells are firing away. The growth mindset is, is uh, fueled by faith. The fixed mindset is fueled by fear. The pro-growth mindset is a progressive mindset. It's about enjoying the process of moving forward. It's, uh, listen to me, 
When you're in a fixed mindset, you're in a default mode. That means you're on autopilot. That means the direct mode means that you're controlling your thoughts and you're engaging in goal-directed behavior to achieve an expected end. Now you can live your life in autopilot or you can live your life in a direct mode. How do I get there? This requires supernatural reconditioning, repositioning, and reprogramming through the Word of God so that you make progress in the presence and power of Jesus Christ. Now the default mode is encoded in your brain and it takes the word of God to reset your mindset so that you become a deliberate thinker by the mind of Christ to produce new and better results. Now you do have a default mode network in your brain because there are things that are repeated every day. You do them without thinking just like you're an autopilot. But when default mode goes beyond its intended purpose, you begin to look at why things will not work and you will fail to start things because you anticipate them not working and you have an expectation that negative things will happen. Now in life, bad things do happen, but it does not mean you cannot start something new. So it takes conscious, deliberate effort and practice to change your thinking and this is a process more than it is an event. Default thinking includes stuff like this. I'm not worthy. I'll always be poor. Things do not work out for me. This is self-negativity. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm inadequate. I'm inferior. Okay? All right? But the uh, growth mindset views challenges as learning opportunities. It's more in invested in learning than it is seeking other people's approval. It focuses on the, uh, on the processes as well as the end results. And you enjoy the process of learning. You know that you have a sense of purpose from God. You choose to learn well over learning, learning fast. You understand that making mistakes does not mean failure. You gain wisdom from your mistakes and God turns your mistakes into miracles. You develop patience and perseverance. And <laughs> you develop a new goal for every milestone that you achieve. And you celebrate every milestone. And you can believe that you can learn and that you can master whatever it is you're facing because of the grace of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want you to develop this growth mindset because it will make you powerful and grace-filled in Jesus. This is good news. May the Lord bless you today.